Hi everyone, my name is Lauren Cole. I'm the coordinator of career services for Troy and I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about how to find a job. So this may be an internship, it may be a part-time job, or you may be getting ready to graduate and you're looking for a full-time job. Well, there's no wrong way to find a job, but there are some better ways to look for a job. So I'm going to share my PowerPoint presentation with you and we're going to walk through some good ways um, to look for jobs. So if you'll join me. So first of all, we want to think about what are employers looking for? Well, they are definitely looking for that first impression. That first impression really matters. And often that comes across digitally. It might be that you've sent them your resume and that is the very first impression that they are getting of you. So we wanna be really cognizant of the way our resume looks, the way our email is written, that we communicate well if we are reaching out to an employer and um, what that first impression looks like. Or maybe you meet someone at a networking event Think about, are you dressed professionally? Do you have an elevator pitch is what we call it. Just an introduction to yourself that is primarily professional based information about yourself. Sure, you can say where you're from, tell them you're a student, but talk more about your degree program as opposed to personal information. Employers are also looking for what we call the core competencies, the career competencies. Those are, um, they're really what we like to call soft skills. So it's dependability, it's work ethic, it's professionalism in the workplace. It is teamwork and collaboration with others, critical thinking and problem solving skills. So above and beyond um, a lot of the technical skills, except for certain entities like nursing, for example. Um, but in a lot of the other areas, the first thing employers are looking for and what's part of that first impression that you make on them is it are those core competencies, those career soft skills that we hope you're developing in higher education that really allows you to be the candidate that can think outside the box and, and use critical thinking and all of those others that we, we mentioned. And then finally, of course, um, the employers want to see your skill sets that you've developed in your major through your classes. They want to see projects that you've been able to carry out. They want to know what experience you've had. Internships are wonderful for this. So you want to list your internships on your resume. If you haven't had those, part-time jobs, even um, volunteer work, especially those volunteer opportunities that you've done a good bit of or you consistently volunteered at the same um, location. Those are all really good experiences that you want to convey to the employers and show what skill sets you have learned from those opportunities. And finally, any training, any certificates, any specialized programs that you've done, they are very interested in those and those can help set you apart as well. So tailoring your resume to each job, this is an important point. We want you to have a broad generic resume that includes, I wouldn't say everything you've ever done in undergrad. Um, you probably learned from our office or from others that the typical um, standard in the industry is gonna be one page for an undergraduate student. It may increase to two pages or more further in your career if it becomes a CV. But for now, we wanna stick with around one page. And if you go to a career fair, or you're sending your um, resume out to a lot of different employers. I understand the need to have it a little more generic, but as you are applying for specific jobs, you really want to tailor your resume each time. So this is, again, uh, often their first impression of you. And they wanna see that you have taken the time to write the name of their job and their company in your cover letter. That you have taken the time to tailor those points on your resume if you're applying just say for a marketing job. Well, you're gonna wanna move that experience where you worked on um, some kind of a board that helped with marketing an event. You want that to be maybe the first point under your experience that jumps out. So you want to bring their attention, especially in that first half of the page, um, to the direct experience that is related at least somewhat to the job you're applying for. So tailoring that resume. 
resumes are still vital tools in the job search. So even though we have gone online in a lot of aspects, um, they typically employers are going to ask for your resume first. So we still want to have that resume um, very, very tailored to those jobs. We want to have an, an achievement oriented resume. So you want to use very descriptive adjectives. You can really just Google descriptive adjectives for resumes and come up with a whole list. Now, of course, don't use those if it doesn't apply to you, but just make sure that every bullet point doesn't start with in charge of or organized. Don't use the same words over and over again to describe your experience. You really want to have some different, a variety of adjectives on your res resume and you want it to be achievement oriented, which shows results. So if you can track your results for anything that you're a part of, especially if it was a fundraiser or anything to do with money or the number of team members that you worked with. You want to quantify your resume and show that uh, the things that you have done, you have achieved things. So, and the more relevant to the job you're applying for, the better. So again, tailor those, um, those skill sets that you've achieved on your resume to the job you're applying for. And then we just want to encourage you as you are getting ready to submit your resume for a specific job or you're filling out an application, make it as obvious as possible that you have achieved the things that they are looking for. We can simply see this by looking at the job description. So you want to see the bullet points, the qualifications that these hiring managers are looking for, and you want to tailor your resume as such. Now we do not mean to lie. Never ever lie on a resume. So you want to make sure that you are telling the total truth, but you also want to take from the job description and include those points on your resume if you have done those things. Don't skip out on that. Make sure that your application and your resume is really mirror image to the extent that it's true of the job description. So five ways to get a job interview. You really want to think about these things um, and how you're spending your time right now, especially if you're a senior, the earlier you start, the better. Juniors, sophomores, even lower, the sooner you can start, the better. And so that really, the number one on the list is networking, okay? So five ways to get a job interview um, and to successfully get a job one day. The first one and the most impactful one is networking. We'll talk more about this later. The second one is the phone. We want to encourage you pick up your phone, make connections with people through networking and call them as much voice to voice contact or in person um, that you can do, then the better. We still have newspapers, right? We still have postings online on the internet that you can look up and you can see any kind of jobs that are posted. Anywhere you can scour to find this information is helpful. And then finally pounding the pavement. Just get out there. Um, once you can visit businesses and we are outside of this quarantine time that we're in right now, if you can ever have a chance to do an informational interview, we call it with someone, you're not necessarily asking them for a job right then and there. You are picking their brain about what's their day-to-day -day job like. You're really interested in their field. You want to you wanna know what do they do every day. And um, buy them a cup of coffee when you can. Or right now, digitally do that, where you can be emailing people or meeting them in a virtual call online, where you can even see them and talk with them. And so we do want to get out and visit places um, dress up professionally and try to get your resume in as many people's hands as possible. So as we were talking about first, networking is the number one way to find a job. That is the key. You can apply online and I'm not saying that that's not successful. You should apply online. But your most successful way of finding a job is through networking. It's the number one way of finding a job. It is very interesting to note that 75% of all job openings in the United States are not advertised. That is shocking news often. But if you realize, um, if you go to Indeed and Monster and a lot of the job search sites, it's interesting that you will see some of the same 
opportunities posted over and over again. And if you get one of those, great. It might just be your opportunity to get some experience on your resume for a few years. And you should still apply for those, especially if you're interested in them or maybe in the location or getting in that industry. You should still do that. But it's very um, interesting since a fourth we see of the jobs are not posted online. Well, how are they being sought after? How are they being achieved? It's all through networking. I would like students to understand that networking is not someone calling in a favor for you to get a job. Networking is back to that prior slide that we looked at, that you are making phone calls, you are emailing people, you are asking people to pass along your resume, you're doing informational um, interviews with people, you're getting to know people in your industry, maybe it's through national organizations, can you join a club through the university that might have a national um, branch to it where you can meet others, it's going to networking functions, it's being involved in your your community we could go on and on in ways that you need to try to meet people in your industry or maybe it's virtually maybe you're connecting with people through Twitter maybe you're following Facebook pages or LinkedIn Instagram pages of companies where they are um, talking about what they do day to day so it's really important that we are starting to develop our network now so employee referrals count for almost a third of all new hires. So as we're saying, it is very important that you try to find what we like to call a warm contact. So to explain to you, a cold contact is not useless. A cold contact can work out. Sometimes if you are bold enough to reach out to an employer or a business and you can find a way in, you can find a contact that you develop and become friends with, or not friends, but acquaintances in the business community with them. But if you can find a warm contact, that might begin with your family. Maybe it's your immediate family, maybe it's family members and your, your extended family, maybe it's your friends, maybe it's close friends. Well, we wanna to start to get our resume, not just in their hands, but friends of theirs, and friends of friends of theirs, and friends and friends and friends of theirs, okay? So you wanna think about networking in that way, that um, you are passing along your interest in that um, job network or that industry, or just that you're looking for a job. Hey, I'm getting ready to graduate in May. I would be very grateful if um, my friends and family could pass along my resume. If you can be introduced to someone in your industry in a professional capacity through a warm contact, through someone you already know that can speak on your behalf, that is a really wonderful way to start to get an interview. Now in an interview, all this is to say, you still have to brush up on your interview skills. We can help you in career services. You have to get the job yourself. You have, you have to earn the job. These tips with networking is really to help you um, get to that interview. So these are the best ways to do that. As we said, you start with your friends and your relatives and your family and asking them to pass along your resume, asking them to just mention you when they're having conversations with professionals out in the community that you're interested in. We want to always send thank you cards. Old school hard copy thank you cards are the best way um, because it's not as common anymore. If you send a handwritten note and it shows up on someone's desk after they have helped you, and it doesn't even have to be after a formal interview. It might just be um, at a time that you someone has just done an informational interview or spent some time passing along your resume for you. Please take time to send them a thank you note. Of course, like we said, hard copy, um, stands out, but if they are young, used to emails, very active, um, not at home a lot or not in their office a lot, if they're on the road a lot, then an email can suffice. And of course, you can always do both. And of course, we know the more people you meet, the more opportunities that will come your way. So networking should be your primary focus when you are looking for a job. And next, on the phone, um, we want to take some time to talk about um, how you should be picking up the phone. So it can be a little bit intimidating um, to stay online and apply for jobs is easier but less efficient. 
So take the opportunity to call and follow up with any managers that you may have applied for a job with. And this of course can be um, people that you've made contact with just by warm contacts and asking them to pass along your resume. But if you have applied for a job, I would encourage you in your cover letter, not just to say, I look forward to hearing back from you and who knows if you ever will, right? I encourage you go ahead and put in there, I look forward to following up with you in the next week or two weeks, whatever amount of time you're comfortable with, ensuring that you received my application and my resume. And then if you say it, do it. That is best practice to always try to follow up when you can. You may not get through to the person, you may not hear back, but I would encourage you pick up the phone and call and try to find an actual person to talk to. You will stand out um, and if you can't get them on the phone then we understand email might be your next best option, but always try to follow up. There is the balance of not following up too much too often, but um, typically students underestimate that the amount of times they need to follow up so i'd encourage you make sure you follow up and understand that most of the time employers are just really busy so don't feel bad give it a week or two don't call every day by any means but understand often they're just really busy and once they give you the guarantee that they've received it i'm not saying you still have to follow up all the time um, but that call or that email that's received can make a big difference so if you are trying to call, just a little tip, I would try to go ahead and call early in the morning, sometimes before 10 o'clock. Often employers arrive in the office much earlier than that. Of course, they're most of the time there by eight. Many are there much earlier. And um, that is their time to catch up on things. Their mind is a little more clear. They're not um, booked up with meetings all day. So you're probably gonna wanna call before 10 a.m. in the morning. Um, and, and, and hey, it helps avoid if something's gone bad in their day, right? Um, that they don't associate you with that. You probably will be nervous the first time you call some employers or, or every time. Some of us don't get used to that as quickly as others. So it's a good tip to maybe call those that you aren't as interested in early on. So you can kind of get some of those nerves out of the way. And then, or some of the ones that you're more comfortable with. Maybe they are closer friends or friends of the family. So you're not quite as nervous. You may want to try those first. Know what you're going to say. Don't necessarily have a written out list that you're reading from, especially if it's a live virtual call. You don't want to look like you're reading, but know what, have an idea what you're going to say and practice that. The same goes with interviews. We should have three, four, five, lots of different examples of our skill sets, stories from our lives, from our um, experiences on campus and organizations in the community and volunteer that we can use um, when we talk to employers. So you wanna do the same here. Just have a general idea of what you're gonna say, rehearse it a few times, practice saying it out loud, even if it's to yourself in your room, just close your door, practice saying it. Nobody's gonna think you're crazy. It just is a good opportunity to get the words out so that you know you'll be able to do it when you know the pressure is on what do you say if they say they're not hiring well first of all you probably don't want to just lead with the fact that you're looking for a job nothing wrong with that if you do if the nerves get to you but we want to lead with your interest in their job their industry what their company specifically is doing and to do that you need to have done some research you need to be somewhat familiar at least with what's on their website and what's on their social media accounts of what's going on and what they're doing in their industry so you probably don't want to lead with are you hiring because the automatic um answer is most of the time not all the time but a lot of the times is no so, but what happens is employers want to get students' resumes kind of in the hopper, if you know what I mean, a pipeline of resumes. They may not be hiring right then. You may not be graduating right then. But if they can match you, if they have your resume on file and you followed up several times and you're top of mind, as we say, 
to um, be available for that job opportunity. Once it comes around, they'll think of you. So that's what we wanna do is um, practice our saying our interest in their, in, in their industry and in their job. And eventually maybe we'll get to, do you have an internship or a job currently? But it's more about making the connection, the networking connection and the relationship. And finally, just as we said with networking, the more relationships you make on the phone, the more calls you make, the more opportunities that will come your way. On the internet, um, the web we know is a, an awesome resource of so many different job search sites, so many different employers out there, but we don't want you to solely get bogged down in applying for jobs online or solely relying on the internet as your pure method of job searching. That's why it's definitely not first on our list. Networking is, then making phone calls and other contact points. Um, the internet is a very good way to see what jobs are out there, who is hiring, um, but keep in mind that you're probably only seeing a quarter of the available jobs that are out there. And as we mentioned earlier, Sometimes people are, they know they have a job coming open soon, maybe someone's leaving, maybe it's a new position they're creating. Well, they often have someone that they've met in the industry or if it's an entry level job at a career fair that is in their pipeline already that they will interview, maybe they'll interview two or three that they had in mind, but they are never posting that job on um, just for the world to see. So don't rely solely on the internet as your method of job searching. You can use it for sure. Feel free to, but not your only and not your first move. So 14% of all new hires come through the company's own website. Often you do need to not just check the job boards, you need to check the employer's website. So um, there are different standards for different industries. In our industry, in higher education, we do, and in state entities, you do have to post every job opening you have. But in lots of other um, private companies, they don't have to. They do sometimes, because that's how they funnel all their resumes and applications through it. Um, but not always, especially in small and medium-sized businesses, they don't. So um, just from company to company, check out their website, see what they've got posted. Um, and then you want to know that only 8% comes from job boards. So that tells you a lot. Um, I would spend 8% of your time on those job boards, right? And the others going through the actual employer's websites and then more beyond that networking. All right, so don't apply for jobs which you are not in the ballpark to handle. So if there is, what I do want students to understand is if you have had part-time jobs, even consistent a lot of hours in practicum or internships or volunteering even, you can count some of those hours towards experience. So when a field says, have you had, um, let's take human resources, for example, have you had a year of HR experience? Well, if you've done a co-op program in HR where you've spent three semesters in a full-time co-op, then you have. Um, you can even start to cobble that together sometime with part-time jobs and internships too. So don't discount the experience that you've had. But also, do not apply for a top management job where you do not even meet the number of years of experience required or any of the skills that are answered there. You are wasting your time and you don't want to um, look disrespectful to the company. So just being aware, if it's a little gray area, you're not sure, then and you're really interested in it, then maybe give it a try and try again to network with anyone in the, um, in the business to see if that's uh, negotiable. Um, quality, but if not, if you don't qualify, don't apply. So including keywords and following the instructions, this is huge. This is a very basic skill that you definitely should learn um, by the time you graduate college and should have had coming into college, right? So what I do want you to understand is when we say keywords, we're talking about from the job description. So again, um, don't make anything up. Don't put something on your resume just because it's in the job description. But when they are saying certain qualities they're looking for, make note of that. That is important. They really want to know that um, you have what they are looking for. So make it clear to them as long as you do. Just in a very basic way, follow the instructions. 
please do not um, overlook parts. Don't skip parts if they're asking. It might be a two-part question. Always follow the instructions. That is an easy way to, um, first of all, if it's an electronic system, boot you out of the system. The hiring man manager will never see your resume. But also, it might just be um, someone reading an application. And if you didn't do it correctly or didn't follow instructions, that's a way for them to put yours to the side and not count it towards the first round of interviews. Watching out for scams, um, job searching. There are um, employers out there, or actually I should say agencies, headhunter type agencies that will help you find jobs that a lot of times are gonna charge you on the front end. Now there are, a, there's a difference between that type of an agency and a staffing agency. Sometimes, not all the time, but a lot of times, staffing agencies are actually paid by the employer to find the candidate. So that, that's fine. If they reach out to you because they've seen your resume on the internet and you have a lot of the skill sets and qualities that this certain employer is looking for, then it might be worth considering. But always watch out for scams. Watch out for anyone charging you any money on the front end. If you decide to do that, go with a headhunter agency and you know what you're getting into, of course that's your own decision. But be very careful about that and always make sure that you are asking on the front end what the um, cost is towards you personally and never ever of course we know this um, just from safety on the internet but get never ever give out any personal information any of your credit card debit card bank account information social security number so again the more applications you submit of course the better chances we have so when we're thinking about um, all of these different methods that we looked at we want to think about how we go about doing this. How do we keep all this straight? We're networking, we're phone calling, we're emailing, we're trying to get as many job applications out there as possible. And so just realize, just take a deep breath. We know it's stressful, especially while you're doing this in school, but realize that searching for a job is similar to a full-time job itself, okay? So you're gonna spend a lot of hours a week when you are truly in your job search looking for a job. So I hope that reassures some people who were starting to get discouraged. We often say it takes a lot of no's to finally get to your yes. So dive in, go ahead and start getting those no's so that you can finally find that full-time job that's for you, but realize how much time it takes. And it's not spending all that time online applying for jobs, that is some of it, but it is that networking component that you're spending a lot of your time doing. Please stay organized, keep track of all the jobs you've applied for, and really um, try to keep organized all the specific tailored resumes and cover letters that you sent. You don't wanna mix those up, always review whose name and job you put in those documents so that you aren't sending that to the wrong employer. Keep a track, keep a list of all of the phone calls you've made, who you spoke with, maybe jot down a little bit about if there's anything significant that was said to you or that you said to them that you wanna follow up on. You wanna keep track of all of those leads. And then of course, all the people you've come in contact with. If they are someone in your sphere that is willing to be a warm contact for you, that is gonna pass along your resume to others in your industry, don't um, just let that happen and never follow up. We wanna follow up and we also wanna thank those people. So we're gonna have to keep detailed records and really stay organized as we do all of our job searching. All right, so we want to be prepared, right? As we are jumping off, we kind of are learning how to job search, but as we are organized, we know who we want to network with. We're about to get out there and press go and get started. Um, you really want to think through, like we said before, what are some of your typical responses? Go ahead and prepare. They could, if you get to the right person, if you get a hiring manager on the phone or someone in HR, they might ask you um, just an interview question and maybe not even in a formal way, but they really are asking you to summarize yourself. Have a good elevator pitch, a minute or less of the highlights of why you want that job, why you're applying, 
what your major is and why you would be successful in that. So you've got to practice that and have that down. A phone call or a virtual call or a meeting in person with someone, if you are able to get one of those, treat it like an interview and be prepared. We have mock interviews that we do through career services. We have a big interview software program on our website that gives you the opportunity to film yourself answering interview questions and you can send it to us for review or you can just watch it yourself or share it with friends and family. So do that so that you can be prepared for every time you reach out to these employers. If they ask you something, you can answer. So the more prepared you are, for the interview or for any of your networking calls you're making, the more comfortable you'll be. It seems very intimidating at first for a lot of us, but you will get used to it quickly. And um, the more you do it, the better you'll become and the more likely you are to succeed. So make sure you diversify your search. Don't always necessarily look just in your industry. I know it depends on the major, but if you're a communications major or PR, we obviously know you could do communications in any industry. Same for information technology, IT, IS. There's so many different um, industries that are majors that lend themselves to just a host of different industries. So diversify your search. We've mentioned multiple times, don't just look on the internet. But you do want to network with professionals in all industries, not just the one you want to work in one day. You never know what kind of turn your career path is going to take. And you also never know who you're going to meet and who they are involved with. So you want to meet as many people and utilize every available resource and relationship that you have. And the interesting thing about this is don't stop once you get a job. This is key to promotions within your industry, to the next awesome job that you're gonna get that might not be for your current employer. So you really wanna continue to diversify your relationships and your job search. Stay positive, it can be hard. It is a full-time job to find a job, it can be hard. So just realize that if you come across as exhausted or exacerbated or negative when you are corresponding with employers in any way, um, it will not get you where you wanna be. And the same holds true once you get a job. Um, it's really very vital to have a positive attitude and a can-do attitude and a I am willing to learn attitude, especially as a young person that is just starting their career. So um, speak up, think outside the box, have critical thinking. I'm not saying always be a yes person, but be positive when you can. And remember to take time for yourself. So during all this job searching, especially the environment we're in now, then it can be a bit overwhelming the job, the job market, the economy goes up and down, different things affect it. So um, just take time for yourself, self-care, make sure that you're spending the adequate amount of time you need to on your job search, but, but don't get overwhelmed. Definitely self-care, take care of yourself. There are jobs out there. If you're doing the basics that we're explaining here, utilizing career services, be patient. Um, it will take a little bit of time for you to land that entry level job. And sometimes you have to be willing to take a job where you get a couple of years experience and that can lead to um, the next great job. So if it's not the absolute dream job that you've always wanted, it can come. You might just need to take one um, to get I mean, take the best fit for you, but you want to get a couple of years of experience on your resume often just to be able to make that next move in the industry. So be patient. And finally, ask for help in career services. We are here for you. That is why we're here. Um, we are located in Eldridge, but while we are um, working from home right now, we are available through a host of different ways. So if you go to our website, the my.troy slash career services, then um, you will see a lot of job search help there on that page from major and career exploration to our resume templates to interviewing tips. So check out our website, but we also do resume reviews. So you can email us at troycareer at troy.edu for us to review your resume and give you some tips. We do lots of other resume help like 
like we, we mentioned, um, mock interviews, big interview is our interviewing software you'll see there on our page. We have cover letter examples. So, um, and Handshake, finally I'll mention that. We um, offer our job search job site. It's called Handshake. And so we want you to understand it also is another job search site. So it's not um, the silver bullet. It's not gonna be the answer to everything all job search questions, right? But the good thing about Handshake is we, I would say often know a lot of those employers or have actual contact people for those employers because they come to our career fairs or they post jobs with us. Not always, but especially in our region. So if you want to email us with certain employers that you're really interested in, then we can look and see um, if we have contacts with them. But check out Handshake for job postings and just employers, even those that don't have current job postings, for um, people you'd like us to reach out to. And then finally, if we can get back to campus, then we, of course, offer career fairs. But while we are home, working from home and studying from home, then um, we are actually going to look into offering some virtual career fairs and some information sessions with employers. So be on the lookout for those as you're in handshake. We have several scheduled for the rest of this spring semester. So as I mentioned to you guys, Handshake, um, it's our job and internship search platform. So you can connect with employers. All Troy students have a Handshake account automatically. So the cool thing is you don't have to do a new password. You just use your Trojan Pass credentials. And um, we also want you to follow us on our social media accounts. We are very, very active on those. So Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, we have a new LinkedIn page. So please follow us there, there for the newest um, activities and events that are going on. So log into Handshake, you can go straight to the link, troy.joinhandshake.com, or you can find that on our website. You just click there for the Troy students login. It's gonna want you to fill out your profile the first time you log in. So please do that to tailor specific jobs and locations based on your major and your information there. And um, we wish you the best of luck on all that you are trying to achieve in your job search. And again, um, we are in Eldridge Hall once we return back to campus. And But the best way to contact us is Troy Career at troy.edu and to check out our website and all our social media accounts. Thank you.